Never knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie, white on the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an Afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead, and make my day. Black as the ace of spades, but 100, 100 percent American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. United the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. I have with me, with me a very, very interesting young man. It's nice to see young men being interesting and, and, of, and of great courage because that's what we need. Sharif uh, Gerges, Sharif Gerges is a PhD student in philosophy at Princeton University and a JD candidate uh, at Yale Law School. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa and Summa Cum Laude from Princeton where he won prizes for best senior thesis in ethics and best thesis in philosophy. He has a, ve- a brand new book out, Mujo Mama, interesting, you have to get it. What is marriage? Man and Woman, a defense, which he co-authored with Ryan T. Anderson and Robert George. Robert, Robert George, and we're going to tell you how to get the book. Uh, let's see here. Sharif, good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> um, congratulations on your book, by the way. Thank you. What did you think about, before we get into this, what did you think about Ron Paul filibusting for 13 hours last night? That's a pretty impressive uh, run. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a lot of stamina for what he believes in. Yeah. He, uh, well, not Ron, but Rand, Rand Paul. I want to talk to you about your book. Very interesting, as I said, um, about what is marriage. You wrote this book as an expanded version of an article that appeared in uh, the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy. And uh, what type of reaction did that article get at the time? Sure. Well, it got a pretty surprising reaction. Uh, we posted it on a on a network of academic uh, articles without advertising it or anything. And within three weeks, it had become the most downloaded one of the year. A couple of months after that, one of the top five downloaded of all time out of 300,000, 400,000 articles. And um, I think that told us something, which is that people are hungry for arguments in this debate, that uh, they're, they're getting tired of the slogans and of the yeah. dismissal of each other on each side, and, and they want a good argument. And um, that's why we try to expand it and improve on it uh, and, and pitch it to a broader audience for the book. You, were, you, um, um, uh, were you surprised at the way the people, the response you got? I mean, yeah, when you, when you I mean, wrote the article, did you have in mind that you may get this type of reaction to it? No, you know, we thought... Uh, There'd be, it would hopefully, in the best case scenario, kind of influence the academic discussion a little bit, maybe represent a view that's very rarely represented in the academic world, and uh, that would be that would be it. Well, we were we were really um, gratified by the by the wide response we got, and uh, and we knew that uh, that meant that we needed to take the message uh, out there. What is marriage? Good question. <laughs> uh, it's uh, you know from the social point of view, it's the the institution that unites a man and woman as husband and wife to be father and mother to any kids they might have. Um, from the internal point of view, it's a union of the of the spouses at all levels, heart, mind, and body, that's oriented to. It's extended or fulfilled by uh, procreation and family life, and for that reason, calls for an all encompassing commitment, permanent and exclusive. And I think, uh, you know, the the interesting way, the way to put that view in relief is to compare it with the 
view that's being uh, on offer in the proposal to recognize same-sex marriage. Yeah. And I, and I think that idea is basically the idea that marriage is just about emotional companionship for adult emotional fulfillment. And, you know, of course, when you see it that way, it's an emotional union. It's a really deep um, uh, form of emotional attachment and affection and priority. Well, it could be a man and a woman, but it could be two men or it could be two women because there's nothing um, gendered about emotional attachment. Right. And I think that's true. But, uh, but then we have to ask, what are the implications of enshrining that view of marriage in our law and therefore in our culture and in practice. And I think that's the heart of the debate. Most people see the debate as one about whether to expand or restrict the pool of people eligible to marry. And if you look at it that way, yeah, sure, it looks like marriage is a good thing. Equality says you give everybody a good thing unless there's a good reason not to, so we've got to expand. But that's not what the debate is about. Yeah. Everybody should should really, at least, whether whatever their side they're on, should be able to see but the real debate is about which vision of marriage to enshrine in our law. And that's going to have implications, of course, for which relationships get recognized. Um, but it's also going to have implications for what the effects, the social effects of that recognition are. You, you, I read uh, something that you said. I thought it was true and very interesting. I don't hear this a lot. You say marriage have always been the main and most effective means of rearing healthy, happy, and well integrated children, and I, I, I really think that is the primary cause or purpose of marriage, and you're just not going to get that with the so-called same-sex marriage situation. That, that's right, and I think you can look at history as support for the, uh, for, as, as evidence for this idea that uh, kids need by the mom and the dad. That's the only possible explanation for the fact that almost every culture that we've known despite all their major differences across millennia and continents, has seen fit to, to socially regulate the sexual relationships of men and women to make sure that the, the dad sticks around. And I think it's also borne out by the evidence. I mean, every time – social science of the past 50 years has been – up until the same-sex marriage debate, there was an emerging consensus, slow but sure, on the idea that the best family model for children – is the married biological family. Yeah. And that from there, you know, of course, we know heroic parents who do things in other circumstances. We know kids who turn out well. But at the policy level, you're talking about generalities, and on average, um, children will suffer in, in alternative um, alternative arrangements where they don't get to know both their mother and their father, where they don't get to know uh, both a male and female role model. I saw that happen uh some 50 years ago in the black community where I grew up with, you know, my parents, father, mother around, my grandparents were around. And and at the time, some 50 years ago now, most black Americans, you know, they had both parents around and they had, they grew up with the sense of uh, freedom and independence and free thinkers. But once Lyndon B. Johnson came in and the so-called civil rights leaders and they took the fathers out, I saw the negative effect that it had on and it's having on the black community. And yes, a lot of these kids are growing up with single mothers, but that's not the best. The best is a father and a mother together. That's right. And that's actually what got most of the traditional marriage leaders in this debate to begin with. Um, you know, I'm, I'm too young to have been there for this problem. But, uh, for example, my co-author, Robbie George, professor at Princeton, he got into the marriage debate before anybody was talking about same-sex anything. When he saw in his native Appalachia, in West Virginia, the effects of the welfare state, of bad cultural mores, of bad social norms on kids and on families. And he saw fatherlessness and what that was doing to his own hometown. Yeah. And, um, and, and it was really to be able to shore up those stabilizing norms of marriage that we're interested in this debate to begin with. And the problem with recognizing same-sex relationships is that it moves us farther down a different path. The path of seeing marriage is mainly about emotional companionship and emotional fulfillment. And if that's what marriage is, then it may have great personal value, but there is no reason of principle that it should be right. pledged to permanence, as opposed to just being lasting as long as that emotional union does. 
There's no reason that it has to involve sexual exclusivity. You know, sexual exclusivity has emotional costs. Let me take, the one, let me take a quick break. To... We'll pick up your rebound on this. 888-775-3773. In the third hour today, we're going to be talking to Adam Lee. He's a writer, activist, and the author of the book, Daylight Atheism. You do not want to miss out on that in the third hour. The second hour, top of the second hour coming up, going to be reading your emails and Facebook comments uh, and taking your phone calls at 888-7753-7738-7773. J-E-S-S-E, talking to my guest here, very, very interesting book, one that I think everybody needs. I've never heard anyone uh, read anything where uh, an author broke down the emotional aspect of a marriage. It is really, really a good book, and I highly, highly recommend it. Sharif uh Gurgis. Gurgis is my guest here. Smart man. Um, Sharif, how did you how did you become how did you get to be so smart? You have all kinds of degrees and prizes and you're so young. Uh how did you get this way? <laughs> well, thanks. That's very kind. I think uh it's uh whatever talents we've got, we've got from the from grace of God and then they've been cultivated by somebody and I was less to have the benefits of the kind of thing I'm pushing for, which is um, my mom and my dad sticking together for life and for us and uh, making sure that we got the best shot that we could. Well, they did an excellent job. Congratulations to them as well. You point out uh, that even in ancient Greece, where there was homosexual activists or activity, they never considered anything like same-sex marriage. And why do you think that is? That's right. Well, because it's not about bias. It's not about animus. It's not even about just about moral views about homosexuality. It's really about what the social purpose of marriage is. And you can have all kinds of views about homosexuality and still believe in the social purpose of marriage as binding men and women to become fathers and mothers together. Um, in your book, you, um, you on page 18, I believe, you and your co-author discuss how New York Magazine did a story sympathetically outlining a romantic relationship between um, three men. Uh, my question to you, why shouldn't this uh, relationship be recognized as a marriage by the state? Well, that's exactly the point we bring up as a challenge to proponents of same-sex marriage. And we just point out that every one of their arguments would work for this case. You know, they've got a deep emotional bond. This is where they find the most personal fulfillment, and who are you to tell them that they need to limit it to two people? They don't want to be stigmatized. They don't want the kids stigmatized. They want the economic benefits. You name it, the argument applies. And most people think there's something different about this kind of relation. It's not actually a marriage. It might be something else. Maybe the three people find it fulfilling. Maybe they should, shouldn't, whatever. But if we leave them free to do it, that's one thing, but recognizing it as a marriage is another. And they see that marriage is a is a total union. It's a union of heart, mind, and body. It's a union of, that's permanent and exclusive, and it's a union that has the social value. And all of those things distinguish the three men from a man and a woman, but it also distinguishes two men or two women from a man and a woman. It's interesting. I've discussed this issue with uh, homosexual activists, and when I bring up the notion that if, uh, if two men want to marry another man and then three women want to marry another woman— or I want to marry my mother, do I have the same right to do that? They don't want to even discuss those arguments at all. They say, oh, that that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, well, what you're doing doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, people who are really confident about their view, who think it's just the wave of history and you're just a bigot, as soon as you press them just a little (laughs) bit, they they run. 
They'll say, well, that's just different. As if the traditional marriage proponent can say, "Well, it's just different if they're same sex." Or like, well, we don't want to, we don't want to mess up the institution. Oh, well, you know, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're asking about. So they really have no answer to this, and it doesn't change when you go to an academic context. It's exactly the same thing. In fact, if anything, they're much more willing at the academic level to just say, "You know what? You're right. We should recognize multiple partner bonds, non-sexual bonds, multiple households. You name it." <laughs> I, my producer told me that uh, when we were discussing uh, you yesterday, that uh, there are a lot of folks who have read your book, your book, and they were, you know, in support of same sex before. But this book, because it's, you know, I mean, you laid out the argument so well, they have had a change of heart about it now. They don't necessarily agree with it. Yeah, that's that's been one of really the, the nicest aspects of this is that we've gotten mail sometimes. People asking us to keep their identity um, concealed because if, if we posted their message somewhere, their family would find out that they have huge divisions. But sometimes, you know, publishing it quite openly. So on, on the Amazon reviews, there's one guy who tells this story very nicely. Um, and uh, where they just say, you know, I came in, I was a supporter. I was, I was one of those guys on Facebook who would pick a fight with all my traditional marriage uh, friends, and I just saw that there's a different way, and um, and I think that's been that's been a really encouraging thing. Though, though by and large, this is an issue on which a lot of people just don't want to hear the yeah. counter argument. Yeah, you said you're absolutely right. Have you gotten any personal threats? You know, you get some weird mail here and there. Um, thank goodness we don't have any uh, credible threats at this at this point. But uh, I think that. There's, there is one thing that helps, which is when you when you sit down and you want to just have an argue, have a, a true debate with someone, when you want to exchange reasons and arguments, and and we've seen this most in the talks and debates that we've done around the country, you realize that the other side doesn't want to just fight back with emotions and and with threats and with intimidation because that makes them look bad. Yeah. In other words, the more people are willing to make the argument themselves and stand up for what they believe in in a calm loving, rational way, the more awkward it becomes to respond to that with, well, you're a bigot. <laughs> what, uh, what's next for you? Um, hopefully more time on my homework <laughs> and, uh, and on the law school and grad school, and then I, I hope one day to be able to, to teach law or philosophy and maybe, maybe keep, uh, keep writing on uh, public issues where that work is relevant to it. Well, I wish you well. Tell the folks how to get your book. Sure. Uh, we've got a website, whatismarriagebook.com, and uh, it's also available on Amazon, What Is Marriage, Man and Woman, a Defense. Well, it's an honor to meet you, and thank you for spending some time with us today. And I, Thank you. It's I, been an honor to be on. Yeah, I wish you well. You're a bright young man. Your parents have done a good job, and you're an example of what the type of good effect that you know parents can have on children, and we definitely need to return to that. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless you, buddy. You too. All right. Bye now. Amazing. 888-775-3773. 888-77-J-E-S-S-E. You got to get the book, folks. Uh, for the last 23 years now, as you know, most some of you know, we've been rebuilding families by rebuilding the man. We need fathers and mothers to get back together, raise their children, become a good example so that the kids can know the right thing to do and do it back in a moment.